Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Studios, and today we're having a look at my new server rig, which is rather dusty and rather badly cable managed. I'm going to be talking you through the process of what exactly I've got in this thing, and we're going to do a quick clean out and rebuild of it to make sure it's all running nicely, and try and fix that horrible cable management, but I'm not sure how much we can really do about it, because this case isn't really designed to have loads of drives and cables hanging around, but we'll see what we can do. So let's get into it. So kind of thrown up at the top there is a 240 gigabyte Messenger Digital SSD. Nice little uh, cheap SSD which runs the operating system, which in this case is Windows 10, because it's also doubling as an office computer. The main specs of it is an i3-2120, 8GB of RAM, there's two 4 gig sticks there, a GT710 for multiple video outputs, as well as two 4TB Seagate EXOS drives, uh, which are their enterprise drives, which is quite nice. And yeah, they run in RAID 1, because I really can't be bothered to lose data at this point. And they're really nice drives, actually. They um, have performed well so far, and I'm just running them in Windows RAID because that means I can't lose them even if the uh, motherboard decides to go, because if I do hardware RAID, it's based on the motherboard and all that. So I much prefer Windows RAID in this case because I have to run Windows anyway, so relying on it to run my, um, my two drives in RAID is fine. Next is this little... 350-watt uh, power supply, and actually most of this build was done way back in one of my first PC builds ever on the channel, so I'll link that up uh, in the corner, but I don't think it's going to be much interest to many of you, so we'll keep going. The reason I have a GT710 is because I want to have multiple video outputs. This has uh, all three of the ones you really need. It has DVI, HDMI, and VGA, so we can plug it into pretty much any monitor we like. And then we have a whole bunch of cables lying around because it's plugged into multiple things. Something else I'll be plugging in in a minute is a USB 3.0 card because this motherboard is quite old, uh, running the uh, H61 chipset as you can see down there. So it only has USB 2.0 ports, so I'm going to throw two USB 3s in there just so I can have slightly faster connectivity if I'm plugging in external hard drive, things like that, that you want to transfer data a bit faster. So that's the core specs of the machine. It's just sitting in an old Mesa Symphony case because that's what I had. And yeah, I'm gonna take it apart quickly and um, clean it out. So after a little bit of work, I have done some cable management. And it's not amazing, but I've brought it all over to the right-hand side, moved the SSD to behind this panel here, and yeah, just neatened up a few little bits and pieces. It's not incredibly neat by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's looking a bit better. Now it's time to clean off that CPU cooler and get rid of some dust in here. And there we have it. We have a fully cleaned out PC that's looking a lot nicer than it did at the start. There's a little bit left up there to clean out, but it's looking all right overall. And now we're going to fire it up so I can show you what I've done on the Windows side of things. All right, now we're in Windows. Sorry I don't have any recording software or anything like that set up on this machine, but we are now just having a look to see if everything's working. And I've gone in and checked. Okay, so we have our Windows installation running on local to C, we have our four terabyte RAID drive over there, and we also have the Toshiba external drive, which I've currently got plugged into the USB 3 card to make sure that that runs 
and everything seems to be working. I didn't even have to install drivers for the USB card. So I'm going to quickly do a copy and paste test to see if the speeds are right. And then uh, we're going to do some uh, little bits of setup, make sure everything's working like it's supposed to. Right, we are doing a quick test to see if the speeds are right and it's slowly ramping up and down. It's not really uh, like a video file or anything, so it's not gonna transfer at great speed, but we're just going to make sure it goes over the uh, USB 2.0 and that it is doing. So there we go, we've reached USB 3 maximum speed, so that's good. So here we are in open hardware monitor, and we have the CPU running around 31 degrees, which is pretty decent. Then we go down here, and the GPU is running really nice and cool, 26 degrees. So let's give this a run in Cinnamon Char 15, or do... CPU first and then GPU just to make sure the temperatures are under control and then we'll see what happens after that. Let's open up hard and on to what it's going. I'm not really too worried about score but I'm just wanting to check temperatures. So here we go after running a GPU and CPU stress test our maximum GPU temperature is 35 degrees which for a passively cooled graphics card even though it's as low power as it is is pretty impressive. And then we head up here and we have a maximum temperature of 66 degrees on the CPU, which is pretty good. So now we're going to do a networking test to make sure I can use this as a NAS. And then we'll just talk about the conclusion of this build and I'll recommend some things for you guys if you want to build something similar yourselves. All right, so we are now actually back in my desktop and I'm transferring some files over to the server using my one gigabit switch and this is just some Kerbal Space Program save files. So I just remembered you can record, uh, well I can record on my desktop for this, so we're now going to be recording, um, well, my actual screen and there we go, we're doing some more speed tests and just watching until it gets to 100 megabytes per second, which, oh, there we go, we are heading up in the speeds now that we are probably doing some different types of files and that's a decent speed. It's a one gigabit switch, so 110 megabytes per second or so. And yeah, that's about what I'd be expecting for transferring save files, etc. And like I said, we'll be doing some video files next. All right, so there we have it, everyone. I am now pretty much done with everything I need to be done with, and I'm pretty happy with this little rig. It's going to serve as a NAS for my video files, anything I need to keep safe and uh, not be too worried about losing so I can, you know, always know that they'll be there. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I'm uh, impressed with the performance of the i3-2120 and the uh, 8 gigs of RAM in here is going to be plenty. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. If, like I said, you guys want to do this yourselves, I would highly recommend using a newer generation Intel Pentium or Celeron with a uh, relatively cheap motherboard, just something that'll have the uh, SATA ports for your drives. Or on the AMD side, maybe an Athlon 200GE or an older like Ryzen 3 1200, or maybe an Athlon 3000G as well. All those CPUs will do really well for whatever you want to do. And even if you want to do what I'm doing and double it as an office PC or something like that, I think it'll do really well. For drives, you don't really need the most high-performance drives and the most um, like reliable 10-year warranty drives uh, if you are running a RAID 1 system like I am, because that means that if one drive dies, you'll have another one uh, with all your files on it, and you just have to go and buy another drive to replace it. Obviously, drive failures in any situation aren't great, but in RAID 1, you can just be extra safe and uh, make sure that there's a very low chance of you losing data unless there's a full system problem. Um, obviously, it's not going to prevent any like fire damage or water damage, but it'll definitely be a much safer option than only having one 8 terabyte drive, say. So it's definitely a bit of a extra cost in order to save your data, but I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, RAM-wise, you can probably stick with 4 gigabytes of RAM, or 8, really. It's not too bad. I mean, if you're going with a DDR4 platform brand new, then I think 4 gigabytes of RAM will be plenty. And yeah, if you're happy to go second-hand, this platform is fairly old, but really cheap, and you can get this sort of stuff on pretty much any website, like eBay or AliExpress or anything like that. And it's just going to perform pretty decently for what 
we needed to do in this situation. Power supply wise, just go with something you uh, can see will be relatively reliable, we'll just check some reviews, make sure it's not too bad, and really these systems don't use much wattage at all, like you'll be fine with 250 or 350 watts as long as it's a reliable unit. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below, and I'll make sure to answer them. Check out some of the other PC builds, maybe the one where I build my main rig with the Ryzen 5 3600 and 980Ti. Those will be in the end cards on your screen right now. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.